In this video I will show you how to make Antler Grammar for our first programming language. So it will be a very simple language, it will have only a handful of statements, so it will be imperative, there will be no functions, everything will be just an integer, uh, there will be only if and while, and uh, in order to make it somewhat useful we will just add reading and writing statements so that we can ask user for some input and we can print some results. Here you can see a sample code from our language. It's very simple. So the only statements that are allowed are these. The is statement, it contains some logical expression here and depending on the outcome it can either execute the statements or it cannot. We won't add else statement, although we could, but just to keep it simple we will forget about the else statement for now. Uh, while it also has only logical expression here and uh, it can execute some statements. There is variable assignment, reading and printing. And all of these statements need to rely on logical expressions or arithmetic expressions. So here is a list of all the expressions. Logical expression is just nothing more than arithmetic expression compared to some other arithmetic expression. It's very simple. And arithmetic expression is just a bunch of arithmetic expressions that are related to each other with some or arithmetic operations. And uh, you can see that this is not recursive because all of these rules ultimately go to arithmetic expression. However, this rule is recursive because here we have brackets and we can loop back so it can go infinitely. Alright, so now let's go and see how to do it in Antler. This is from our previous video, we'll get rid of that. So the whole file, as you have seen, is just a bunch of statements. So we will just write this. All right, And each statement can be defined like this. So there is some statement, then there is semicolon, and there then can be more statements, or it can be just one single statement. We do not allow zero statements because well, that would be um, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. And statement is defined as follows. There are the four statements we have if it's very simple, just like in other languages. Here we have logical expression and more statements. The other uh, statement that is allowed is while. It's very similar to if. Um, now there is variable assignment, so we will need variables. So let's say that. This is going to be our token that stands for identifiers and here we will have assignment. What do we do with this? In Antler, the parser and tokenizer are both uh, specified in the same file. And the difference between those is that the parser rules start with lowercase whereas the tokenizer rules start with uppercase letter. So if we start uppercase id it will serve for generating tokenizer. And it's going to be very simple. Uh, it's just all the alphabetical letters repeated one or more times. Um, all right, so we have this defined. And now the last one is read and, and uh, print. Uh, it's similar, print, and that's it. These are all the statements that are allowed. Uh, notice that I did not need to specify semicolons anywhere because the semicolons are already used here. The only purpose of semicolons is just to separate statements from one another. Oh, actually, we should probably put this here too. If we did not put this here, then uh, it would look like this. However, if we added the semicolon here, then we need to put it here all the time so that it's consistent everywhere. Uh, now, in order to define arithmetic expression, we are going to do this. Oh, so as you can see, that's a quite big grammar. What's going on here? We cannot actually write it like this, because this grammar, it would not be deterministic. It would be ambiguous grammar, and uh, it would just simply not compile. Uh, instead, we need to split it into levels. Uh, the plus operation is less important than multiplication 
the plus operation has lower binding power, the multiplication binds stronger, then there is unary subtraction, this subtraction takes only one argument compared to this one, this is binary subtraction, and uh, then at level 3 there are all the final tokens that can be matched, it's either a variable or it can be some integer, or we can loop back again via bracket. Integer should be defined like this. And very simple. Oh, my mistake here. It should be colon. Here we have all the digits repeated one or more times. All right, so now that we have all of this, we just add arithmetic expression here, uh, because this serves as our arithmetic expression. And logical expression is going to be defined like this. Notice that logical expressions are actually completely separate from arithmetic expressions. Unlike in C, because in C the, there is no diff distinction, the logical expression also yields an arithmetic value. However, here, to make it simple, we will just split it into two. So this one can be specified just like in our example here. There is not much to worry about. It's either less than or it's greater than or it's equal or it's different. All right, so this is our grammar. It's, it's finished now. The best thing about Antler is that we don't need to compile anything to test whether it works. We can do something very simple, just Press anywhere at any rule that you want to test. For example, we would like to test the arithmetic expressions now. And here you, sh you have option test rule. If you press this, you will see this window. You can now start typing some sample rules. Uh, if this is going to be expression, we can write, for example, one. Oh, and here you can see the parse tree of all this. First, it matches level zero. You see, we start here. Then, do you think this one matches this rule? No, not really. It doesn't really match this rule either. So we have to go here. This is what happens. We go to level one. And now in level one, we try these all these alternatives. None of these two can match. So we go to level two. Now in level two, we can either go with the minus or without the minus sign. We don't have any minus sign, so we go straight to level three and here. This is one, so one is going to be matched by this rule. As you can see, the, the tokenizer actually works first and the parser comes second. So all the, all the tokens are determined at the very beginning. As you can see, one was matched by integer token. So we're going to this branch and we matched. There is nothing more to match. So this is the full parse tree. Now, if we add, for example, plus one, you can see that our parse tree got slightly bigger. Now we matched the plus operator and we matched into two distinct branches. The first goes straight to level one and it matches integer one again. Uh, but the second branch, it loops back to the level zero. So there can be plus one or more times. And you can see this is exactly what happened here. I can add plus one, plus one, maybe plus two plus three and you can see this tree keeps expanding because each time we match plus we go back to rule zero recursively now i can instead of plus put here multiplication and it's going to modify the tree it looks very different now there are two pluses as you can see there's plus plus here's plus plus and next is multiplication mm, but you can't see multiplication here because the multiplication comes from the higher level. So the next operation here is plus. This is what matches. And then multiplication is a sub-branch here. So this grammar is not parsed uh, like this. Instead, this grammar is parsed like this. Oh. Although, if I add the brackets explicitly, it actually makes the parse tree look different. For instance, I'm going to put the bracket here, and you can see there are two pluses here, and this whole thing is going to be matched by this rule. 
so it goes like there's plus then we go uh, to the right and then we go to the left and we go down all this hierarchy up to level 3 and at this point we are matching this rule you can see here it matched the brackets and now the tree starts all over again so it's a subtree within this larger tree it's very easy and comfortable to use antler for development you can test all the rules before you actually compile anything and this is exactly what we will do. In this video, I'm not going to touch Java at all. We'll only work with Antler. All right, so let's go and try some other rules. It seems that all our expressions work fine. Logical expressions are not much more difficult, so they should work fine as well. Let's go to start this time. Mm, test rule. And I'm going to write some sample code. Like, for example, if x is great less than zero, then x equals zero. Uh, here it must contain this. Oh, uh, you see, we just noticed a slight problem in our grammar. It turns out that because we added all the semicolons here, we also need to put the semicolon at this point, because as you see, if I don't put the semicolon, it's not really matching in the grammar at all, it's just errors. I need to put the semicolon here because this first statement is going to be the if statement. Well, actually, it's going to take this one. So it matches statements, it goes to this branch, it matches this statement, it goes to if, and then it expects a semicolon. If we don't want to get this, we can remove those semicolons from here, and we can remove them from here, and we just need to add them here. Okay, and now it should work just fine. I can remove this thing. And it's working. So let's try something more complicated. For example, let's put here a while. You can see now this tree is much bigger, but it all works. There remains one last thing to be fixed. You might notice that in many places there are those red zigzags appearing. It tells us that Antler notices all those white spaces and it doesn't know how to deal with it, so it throws errors. We can tell it not to worry about them, by adding a special rule, something like this. It will match our spaces, or tabs, or new line characters one or more times, and it will send them to channel hidden. So essentially, it just ignores them. It pretends as if they did not exist. And as you can see now, all the red zigzags disappeared. That would be it for the second video. In the third video, I will show you how to run this parser from Java and use it to build abstract syntax tree. Thank you very much for watching. You can see link to the code in the description.